as we talked about, this is uh, one of the first stores that I had opened back in the day when we were trying to reach the community more directly. And um, this is where we build all of our custom rods. It's also where we uh, make appointments for charters to take people out fishing. So it's a, another nice platform to interact with the public. Why don't you show us? Sure, yeah, let's take let's a look. Yeah, let's go inside. So you're gonna give us a little tour. And yeah, basically, you know, this store fits all of someone's fishing needs on a local level. Um, the type of fishing we did today was surf casting, and we have a selection of surf rods. We also have boat rods. So really, this store comes into play, when, especially when people are visiting from out of town and they really want to engage with our um, resources and our beaches and waterways. Um, this becomes a, a platform to educate them from. I love and, that. Uh, we also book a lot of charters out of this location and make appointments to get people out on the water that might need a little help at first. Um, so from there too, we have um, very seasoned fishermen that come through. We build custom rods for them. Can you they, show like the bait? Are those the bases or just how does? Um, bait, I can show you a rod here that was built for a customer that hasn't picked up yet. Uh, this gentleman is going to be fishing in Florida and this was built for snook. So we actually wind up doing projects for people that are going on vacations at times too. Um, so this was designed just for the specific type of fishing that he's doing. And through custom rod building, um, we've done a lot of different productions. We um, did a episode for Father's Day on the Today Show where we oh, built wow. rods for um, Willie Geist, uh, Natalie Morales, and Al Roker. Also, okay. Jeremy Wade from River Monsters uh, on Animal Planet is a uh, person that I have um, built rods for for the show. So, wow. you know, it's a great platform to, to share that type of thing with as well. You know, customers will come in excited about their catch and we always encourage them, please bring us a photo, we'll put you up on the wall. And it turns into this, you know, almost a, a big postcard of all the things that happen here. Six years old in Minnesota, Lake Minnetonka with my dad. Yep. And he was showing me how to fish. Right. That was right. like, and then two years later we fished, but, and then that was it. Right. Well, I, it's not losing interest, it starts, but you know, is you have an experience usually with family when you're younger and you know, then it comes back when it does, you know, for some people it takes uh, a while. It doesn't happen right away. It's like but, 20, 30 years. Yeah. But you know, they remember <laughs> that moment and they yes. say, Hey, you know, I want to do that again. I, you know, I want to relive that a little bit where I am now. So. And I feel like I just relived that today. That's cool. That's very cool. So now I'm excited to savor away. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> With seven fish. That's right. That's where we're going to So now, stay right? tuned. We're on our way to have a culinary adventure at his next facility, which is called? Pascal's Seafood. Yes. Okay. So from exploring the shores to going to the bait and tackle shop, and now we're here at your awesome facility. I love it. And it's pretty new. It is uh, very relatively new. We opened this facility on November 5th, which was also opening day of base gallop season. Oh, wow. So I kind of made it a mark on purpose because we like to celebrate this event on the east end of Long Island that we could wrap the new facility uh, being operational into that as well. We were successful. And every day since, every week, we've been handling and opening base gallops. That's what we're doing today here. And um, as we talked about sustainability of seafood when we were on the beach together, there's a whole nother level of sustainability in the base scallop. The base scallop lives for about 18 months. Okay. And the season is set up in a really intricate way to where in September, those scallops that have a year behind them and they've already reproduced, whether we catch them or not. Oh. So out of the gate, this is a wonderful thing to enjoy. And um, another step that we take with these scallops, we save all of the shells, and we'll look at this behind us in a moment, and these shells get donated to the Shinnecock Bay Let's Restoration yeah. Program. Sure, yeah, let's take a look over here. So, so the Shinnecock, so tell me more about the Shinnecock is just say, I mean, I did just move here okay. to the East well, End. Shinnecock so Shinnecock Bay is where we, we were on the ocean side of Dune Road. Okay. On the other side of Dune Road, that bay area that we saw is uh, all part of Shinnecock Bay. It's a large body of water. Okay. So. What happens with these shells, what we're doing that's a little different than other operations is that we're separating the guts of the scallop from the shell in order to keep these clean enough that we will donate these to the Shinnecock Bay Restoration Program. And what they're gonna do, they're gonna take these shells and put them into a bag and kinda get them nice and tightly packed together. And then they put that bag of shells into a tank 
where oyster seed is planted on the bag of shells. Oh, wow. So this oyster seed that's now impregnated on the shell goes into the bay and creates an oyster reef. So without the substrate, without these shells, they wouldn't be able to grow more oysters. And it's that cleaning. In effect, clean our water. I think, oh, I don't know wow. the number exactly, but an oyster cleans an enormous amount of water per hour. They're siphoning it and taking out the um, different things that they consume and expel clean water. Wow. So we're all about clean water because without it, our industry is going to fail, right? Exactly. So we have to be doing things that are proactive. We have to be involved on that level to see future generations be able to do what we're doing today. And the best part about this process is anyone who is dining at a restaurant or purchasing local base scallops from you, mm -hmm. again, we're going back to sustainability and they're helping right. us, like the culture become sustainable. Exactly. Everybody that participates has a hand in that. Yeah. So it is a group effort. Without everybody involved, it doesn't work. Yeah, what's that happening, one. Okay. Dina and Melissa here are opening the scallop. And here, this little coin of a meat is the part that we all know is a base scallop. That's what we eat. And around it is the other organs of the scallop. And Dina's about to take the knife and flip that away. Now, is it hard to, to do that? It takes practice. Okay. And, you know, I like to think of it as a methodical effort. Um, so now that the guts of the scallop have fallen into the dish, and what we do with this is that we freeze that to bring to our tackle shop to oh, sell to wow. customers as chum for fishing. So again, instead of killing an animal to create fishing chum, we're kind of reclaiming a part of this that would normally become waste and giving it another job and wow. another purpose. So we're preventing um, things from being harvested unnecessarily and replacing them with something that's available. Um, wow. So every part of this scallop is used. This soup that we're gonna have tonight is one that we took the racks of our fish and we actually made a stock out of the racks of the fish and that gives it a lot of natural flavor. When you say a soup is built from scratch, that's a lot of how that happens is that you're taking all of the parts of the um, different ingredients and rendering it until it has incredible amount of flavor. Tonight we have a black sea bass chowder. So that's you can amazing. really take a base soup like that and add the ingredients yeah. that's timely in the season. Oh, wow. So are you and ready to uh, enjoy a little bit with us? I am, but this is gonna be one of the seven fish. This is one of the seven fish, and I think it's a great start. Yes. It's a great way to warm up yes. and um, start a meal. Especially for the holiday season. That's right. Yeah, let's get this going. All right, let's do that. We'll set the table. Oh, man, it smells right. so good. So, this soup is the black sea bass, sea bass yep. chowder. Yep. And this is one of the items that you're going to be selling for seven fish. For the holiday seven fish. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is a, a soup that we can um, use whatever fish is available that week. This is really good. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. In the recipe. Essentially, again, we um, start by making a fish stock from scratch. So we're taking the fish to make the flavor with other vegetables and we strain that away. So we've got this very, very flavorful base now. We're adding leek, tomato, uh, celery, potatoes, and shiitake mushroom in this case. And at that point, we'll use the fish that is being landed at that moment that we're making wow. soup that week. So basically, um, on Thanksgiving, we had a striped bass chowder. This week, we have a black sea bass chowder. By the time we get to Christmas, we're going to pick the best, freshest fish to make as part of the soup. Wow. Yeah. I love this. Thank this you. is, and what about the vegetables? The Local vegetables. farms? Yep. We source as much of our vegetables locally as we can, you know, although some of them fall out of season. So mm -hmm. what we'll do if... If we can get potatoes when potatoes are in season, we will acquire them locally to make part of our ingredients. If a vegetable's out of season, we'll source the nearest vegetable we can find. Because I'm tasting a lot of celery, onions, mm -hmm. tomatoes. I know you already listed it, but it's just like I can taste it. Mm, good. 
yeah, all those ingredients should have an identity. You know, you it definitely to, does have an identity. You should be able to separate <laughs> it's so them. So good. Thank you, thank you. And this is something I can see a family purchasing for dinner. Mm. Yeah. So they can pick it up here, or they can pick it up. They can order it online, or okay. ha what's the process? Um, the process is really, you know, our, um, you can call us on the phone, place an order. We can prepare to have that ready to be picked up. People do pop in and place an order occasionally. So um, from there on the internet, you could go to our website and place that order. Um, so we, we often encourage people to just give us a call if they have questions because that's the best way to really communicate what's happening. Oh, definitely. change, each, you know, week to week. And what's your favorite process? Hmm. I really enjoy taking, let's say, a fish and drawing out that process as far as I possibly can, kind of like with this soup. Mm -hmm. You know, you, let's say we have a black sea bass in, for this instance. You fillet the back black sea bass and you're left with the rack, which we make the fish stock from, right? So that's a whole process in itself. I might take an evening just to make fish stock out of that part of the fish. Wow. The following day, you're combining, you know, local ingredients and making a soup where then you're utilizing the fillet of that fish. So to be able to, to take an ingredient and really stretch out its, its potential as far as I can, I think that to me is the most exciting process in all of it. Yeah, I love this. So what's up next? Next, we're gonna try a calamari salad. It's a cold salad that's made with a local squid. And a lot of people don't know that a big part of our industry on Long Island is a, a squid harvest. And um, it's a really nice, like a tender calamari that it renders. And because it's local, so quickly handled, um, when you're on Long Island, I don't think there's any calamari that might compare to it. Do you do fried calamari too? We do. Okay. Yep, we make fried variations of our foods and um, as well as, you know, um, more of like a poached uh, version as well to make this salad. Um, but either way, it is delicious. Yeah. I cannot wait to try it. Great. I'm really excited. Excellent. I am so loving our culinary adventure right now with you. And Thank you. the soup was so savory and creamy. And now diving into this next course from the seven fish, I, I'm, I'm just in awe by the presentation of this because again, it's calamari, mm -hmm. salad, yes, chilled mm -hmm. together. You have to tell me what's going on here. Absolutely. You know, uh, this is local calamari that's been poached, and it um, renders a really tender calamari. We then marinate it in a olive oil, vinegar, marinade overnight, <clears throat> and the result is a chilled salad that can be served as a pastor d'oeuvre, as we see. This can also be put right over a bed of greens if Ooh. one chose to, for even a lunch, a light lunch, and um, that marinade is really a, a fine vinaigrette for a salad too but quite often i think people just dive right in and do what we're about to do here i think we should r dive right in all right enjoy i'm ready to savor away so this looks delicious thank you yeah this is a, a really traditional long island recipe this is a baked clam mm. so we take local hard clams that are harvested in our bays we chop them up and create kind of like a holiday stuffing, you could okay. call it. And uh, you know, traditionally you squeeze a little lemon over it and another nice light appetizer to engage in the meal. What I love about this, this dish, it could, like you're saying it's an appetizer, so any dinner parties, mm -hmm. if there's anyone that's having dinner parties anytime soon, they can just order it from you. Yeah, the, you know, these are pretty labor intensive to put okay. together if you were to make them from scratch. So yes. again, we try to fill in in that space and make it easy for people. And then we like want people too. to take the credit for their meal too. You yes. know, even though we've prepped this stuff, um, they're the ones who's gonna heat it up and serve it and garnish the plate like we did here. Yes. So there's credit to be taken for the meal. It's really good. Thank you. It's really, really good. What's wow. nice about this recipe too is we don't add any salt to the clam. The clam has a brine of its own, kind of like an oyster is salty. The clam has the same thing. So we just make a clam stock from the clam juice and incorporate it into the dish. So any flavor of salt just is a natural part of that clam juice that you're tasting. Wow. And then I taste roasted peppers, red peppers. Yeah, we have a, a 
red pepper that was sauteed on high heat with a little bit of shallot, some celery, and um, you kind of cook that almost like you're starting a soup. But once you have your liquid combined with the clam stock, you start adding the breadcrumb and turning it into a stuffing. So it really captures all that flavor like a soup does. Yeah. Just a different vehicle. And I love these two. Yeah, we like those two. Tell me what we're going to be savoring next. Next, this is uh, approaching more of the entree style meals. And what this is, is a filet of black sea bass again, because it was okay. in season this week. This filet can rotate as well. It becomes a flounder filet certain times of the year. And we've rolled it and created a stuffed fish. Wow. And on top, we've got a, a garlic butter herb finishing sauce. Right when we're done putting this in the oven, uh, the last five minutes, we put this butter on top to allow it to melt, to give it just a little bit of a, a sauce of herb and flavor on top. Wow. And just the scent of it, it's just... Yeah, it really kind of uh, goes through the room a little bit. It does. It? And, and this is a very nice um, entree to pair with a local wine, um, you know, at that stage of the meal. Uh, a, a light white wine from okay. a local vineyard would be very appropriate, like a, a Chardonnay that's unoaked, um, something of that nature. It's funny you're mentioning that because we're going to be taking a journey out to the North Fork soon. Yeah, and checking out several of, of their vineyards with um, friends of ours, Alex. He he owns um, CWD, Cellier Wine Distributor. Wonderful. So he has a lot of boutique vineyards. Right. So you're going to have a whole selection of the North Fork in one place to yeah. experience wine. Oh, definitely. It's going to be fun. So we're going to try a little bit of white wine. I'll make sure to get you some wine. Please do. Yeah, That'll so we can great. pair even more dishes with it. That's right. Keep exploring that. We're going to be like exploring it. away. Okay. So we're going to add the lemon. Yeah, I, you know, I enjoy a Let's little bit it. of citrus with um, seafood myself, and that's a personal preference. I love the consistency. It's very creamy. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that fish fillet on top. And look at the seam. Oh, wow. A little bit. And like you said, that creaminess underneath of the stuffing complements the firmness of the fish. And then now going back to the slow food, this helps out with the East End community being involved. With, if they're not involved with slow food, you should check it out online mm -hmm. because that's what you're doing with them too, is with, you're working with a lot of the people that are providing you resources. Yes. The local farmers, mm -hmm. the chefs, yeah, it's a real collaboration of like-minded thought when it comes to food. People that do want to take time to explore the potential of ingredients, to pair them together like we're talking about. Um, when you find a community of people like that, it just, it really grows from there too. Yeah. It's, it's like the catalyst to attract more and more people to these good things. So the packaging. Yes. Let's see what you have here. Sure. Uh, this is a base scallop and linguine that's prepared ahead of time to where we've placed the linguine as well as the scallop and sauce into boiling in the bag. So really all you're going to do is boil water and drop these in to bring the food to temperature. And we find this is uh, a real asset when you're entertaining guests or if you're doing a seven course meal. Um, you really don't have that much time to create seven dishes in exactly. a row. So this is another way to help people along to where if the water's boiling, these two packages get dropped in, and in 10 minutes, you're serving. So a little grated cheese on top for a finishing touch, and um, you know we're preserving all that quality in our local seafood and making it easy at the same time. And local cheese, you can go to Meacock's Dairy Farm. Yeah, nice they idea. Have, oh, they have great, like their Parmesan cheese is like, it's it is really nice. good. Mm -hmm. And on the back of the box, we always offer instruction. So we make it very clear in case you're in a bit of a rush or if you're you know, doing many things at once, uh, this is gonna walk you through the process. So it's a nice reference at the same time. This is a perfect gift. It does make a nice gift. It'll be a perfect yeah. gift. On our website, you can order um, Haskell Seafood. It comes in these boxes and um, we can ship around the country. They don't have to be totally submerged. They just have to be in the water. And at the halfway point, 
we're actually going to flip those bags. So we're going to say in 10 minutes, it'll come to temperature. At the five minute mark, I'm just going to turn them. Okay. And at that point, we can open the bags and eat. Wow. This smells so, like the aroma is and just, wow. And the funniest thing is, it only took you less than 10 minutes to make this. It did, yes. That, the preparation process makes it easier yeah. for the consumer. Yeah, one of our goals is to make local seafood easy. If you think traditionally about what it takes to enjoy local seafood, yes. you've got to go to a fish market, then to the grocery store, possibly the bakery, and um, the amount of time it'll take to cook the pasta and prep everything, this could be a, an afternoon's worth of work for uh, you know a family, let's say. So. What we tried to do is take all of that out of the equation to where we had those boil in the bags, right? They went right into the boiling water. The pasta is cooked uh, al dente, so when it is reheated, it's kind of the perfect tenderness. And, um, you know, we just feel like it shouldn't be that hard. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for people. So let's savor away on this again. Please. It's olive oil. Mm -hmm. In the sauce, it is an olive oil, uh, a little bit of citrus. Okay. White wine. There's shallot, garlic. It, yeah. You use a little bit of Romano cheese in the sauce, so you can garnish it and put some fresh greens and fresh cheese on top, and it creates a really nice presentation. But all those flavors are already in the sauce. I love that. Mm, good. Making life a little bit easier <laughs> to That's have right. a great I'm culinary okay. adventure. <laughs> I'm loving it. And again, it pairs well with white wine. Yes. Yep, many fish do, and I think it's safe to say that that's the type of wine that can be on the table right through the meal. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This course looks just... Tell me more about it. Absolutely. Peter, yeah. tell me more about it. This is just, you wow. Know, one of the things we've got happening here is kind of like a traditional fish and chip approach to having a fried element to the uh, courses. And we use a porgy, which is a really underutilized local fish that when it's cleaned, it's a very delicate and flaky white flesh and it really breads beautifully. We also put some of the local base scallops in breading to complement it. So you've got this savory flaky fish as well as this sweet, really um, tender and delicate scallop that complements one another. The sauce we're using is a malt vinegar aioli. And in the classic style of fish and chips, quite often you're in a pub, you order fish and chips, there's a bottle of malt vinegar there. Yes. So to kind of carry that on, we've made an aioli as a dipping sauce, which makes a very tangy, and bright flavor alongside the uh, flavors of the of the lightly breaded seafood. Wow. Yeah. And then going into this last dish, mm -hmm. this cake, it's not your ordinary bake style cake of a sweetness to it. It's an Italian style fish cake. Correct. It is a, a good representation of a traditional um, part of a seven fishes where Traditionally, I believe it's codfish that they're using quite often to make a fish ball or a fish cake. And in this case, we've used fluke, which is another uh, light, flaky fish that's similar uh, to create a cake that's kind of creamy because we're using potato as well mm. to give it this uh, nice softness. Um, and it lends itself again to a, uh, one of the traditional steps in our group of fish here. And what, I'm, what I love about each dish that we had tonight and just going through that process with you, I felt that I was a part of the journey when you're going fishing. I was part of the journey when you went to the farm, or part of the journey here when they're shucking. It's like you showed us how it all worked and came together. And now you're offering it out to the community. Everyone has a moment to savor each and every day. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but as long as you love what you're doing and you're sharing it with other people that you love so they get a feel of it. Mm -hmm. So again, with you, you're sharing it with people that you love platonically or pat, like whatever it may be. Sure. You're still sharing that passion because I'm ta everybody takes a feel like, wow, they care. Great, great. You really care. This is delicious. 
Okay, the fluke is a really nice lighter fish. The, the texture of the fish is very fine. So when you blend it into the cake, it really forms nicely. You know, it holds together and that added potato gives it that creaminess. And Long Island has been known for its potatoes for a long, long time. That was one of the first big crops on Long Island. So I always enjoy including potato in our recipes because there's a little charm to that as well. Yeah, and again, you're bringing back history. Yeah, yep, carrying the torch of the culture and the heritage that um, you know we have the opportunity to participate in. I mean, uh, without that, we'd kind of be flying blind, I think, right? No, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so on my mother's side, my grandfather's parents um, came over from Poland. Oh, wow. Yep. And on my father's side, um, let's see now, it was his mother's father. So my grandmother's father came uh, from Sweden. So we have a lot of this uh, Nordic background and yeah. uh, seafaring type uh, blood. It's in and, the blood. Um, it is, you know. So growing up, you know, pickled herring around the holidays was a big thing that we've got a recipe that was handed down through generations wow. uh, from those areas. So, I, you know, it's safe to say that my heritage of my, you know, grandfathers, great grandfathers and grandmothers definitely has played a role in our experience as we, um, you know, have had our own heritage here on Long Island. You know, it does marry together. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Cool. That's really cool. So until next time, I hope everyone enjoyed and savored tonight's episode. And to learn more about how you can have the doctor table experience or to have a seven feast of seven fish experience, tell us, how can they savor this at their home? Well, uh, we're always available through social media. We are active uh, on that uh, level to communicate back and forth. People are welcome to call us. Um, you can even stop in here at the facility and uh, knock on the door. And we're always happy to um, you know, take an order, obviously, and we can customize that to that person's needs. So if it's two people or four or more than that, um, you know, those are all the channels that one can reach us, including our website. That's another way. And what's your website? Uh, the website is www.haskellsseafood.com. Haskell's plural. Yes, thank you. Plural Haskell's, because sometimes I may just put in, wait, what did he say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to do that, because I would love for you to savor every moment too. Now, you said social media. Yeah. So Facebook, Instagram, do you have any other channels? Do you have a YouTube channel? Do you uh, Twitter? Facebook and Instagram are the two platforms we're on at the moment. Okay. And, um, you know, we may decide to do a YouTube channel at some yeah. point, things like that. I think get uh, a little bit more insight. We're giving yeah. you a taste, <laughs> but you never know. They may want to continue to follow the journey. True. Yeah. We have some videos of free diving on the uh, Instagram, so maybe we can elaborate. Yeah, that, right? maybe you should elaborate. Okay. Little tip, little tip. I'm <laughs> so again everyone i'm really happy you were able to join us for savor the moments with tia and friends and captain peter thank you so much thank you so much it's been a, a lot of fun today yeah Being together and uh, tasting all this food and walking on the beach to do some fishing i mean you can't really ask for more no you can't and it's tis the season of giving and gathering so until next time we'll be with captain peter we're going to include one of our private chefs with us to be on the journey and we'll probably be on a boat. Yes. Not in the cold. No. <laughs> Until next time, everyone, we hope you're savoring your moments. <laughs>